Welcome to the Poor Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is... Hello, I am Namio. Yes, always Namio. <laughs> Yay! And I figured out what my problem was from last week, because I've noticed the last two episodes my audio quality was slightly different. Like, I was standing, like, th- you know, a good chunk away from the microphone or whatever, which is amazing mm-hmm. considering I wear a headset. I found out what the problem was. I forgot mm. to pull the mic down before recording. Ah. So yeah, you, so for two weeks in a row, which is which is weird because I do upwards of three podcasts a week. You'd think I would think, hey, pull it down, dumbass, but but no. But I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> I mean, it may. I mean, it, I, I could blame it on the day because last two weeks we had to record it on Tuesday, but I uh, <laughs> can't really blame it on that because I've done things on Tuesday before on shows that weren't supposed to be on certain days before and you know had no issues then it's just yeah. it's just derp very much derp <laughs> derp oh so so yeah this week <laughs> uh, <sighs> so so wh- where do we want to start first I, I guess I'll start with um, I want to start with the teenagers this week because okay. cause they, they have the smallest bits, and I, I think, you know, I think it was like, uh, yeah, it was last week. They were they were starting to the discussions about having sex and when they're ready and everything. Yeah, Mo- Molly and TJ were, were talking about doing the dirty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so this week, they're actually getting out there, and they're like, okay, we're going to get a room of the Metro Court, which, of course, they run into, well... TJ runs into practically everybody and their grandmother, which, <laughs> you know, Olivia is a grandmother, so I guess that kind of counts. And, Oli- I, and I love how understanding and open Olivia was. She's like, hey, you know what, you know what, this stuff happens. Oh, you know? God, I got such a such a kick out of Olivia, because he, like, he tried to lie to her at first, and she's like, bullshit! <laughs> she's like, I know exactly what's going on. And then, like, I think she told him, like, five times to, you, you, you better be safe! Put it yeah. in a fucking condom. Obviously, she didn't say it like that because this is a family show. Um, this is but, not. No, 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 no. Well, this it's is so not. It's a, it's, a, show. it's a TV show anyway. They, it's they a have daytime to, TV. They have to abide by the FCC rules, but uh, yes. Which, <laughs> eh. Oh god. What? And she even gave him a what looked like a hell of a discount on the room because, like, she was like counting off the money and. She, I'm pretty sure she kept like five bucks and gave the rest back to him. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you know what you you're working hard, and she even covered for him with uh, Sean, which honestly I, I can see why, and I can see the humor coming out of it, and of course the drama that could come from it later or whatever. Yeah, I, I I've I've grown to the point where it's like you know what. He's there to have sex with Molly. He's done it before. He and Sean obviously have had the talk. You know, yeah. not that TJ needs it because he's not a virgin. So, you know. So it's like, you know, I could just see Sean being like, You gonna be safe? Yeah? You love her? Yeah? Alright. So there's, there's no reason to lie to Sean like that. Of course, now if now if Olivia does give him a part time job there at the hotel, <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that wouldn't be so much of a lie anymore. Hmm. Which I would like to see that. On the other end, we have Molly getting ready to go to the Metro Court. The, I guess her friend is taking her over or whatever. And and, a, and of course she she flat out you know dodges every one of her mom's questions. And I have a feeling Alexis knows pretty much what Molly is going to be going to do. It's hard to tell. Alexis was kind of like out of it. It seemed like. Um... Yeah. Or they're at least a little bit clueless, but I, yeah, I I don't think she knows Molly was going to go have the sex. But <laughs> hopefully she hopefully she at least suspects that Molly and TJ have thought about it. Oh, I'm I'm sure they I'm sure she does, and I'm sure she realizes. Yeah, they're teenagers. Because uh, let's see, when Alexis was uh, Molly's age, what was she doing? Oh yeah, she was getting banged by Julian Jerome. And, and he has been desperately trying to have a repeat performance of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Which, you and, know, yeah. I mean... Uh, and, that, that, and that was kind of uh, Olivia's point, too, because she also got knocked up at 16. Yep, that's right. And then, hey, that got Dante, and then 
Oh, lordy. <laughs> so they so they can speak from experience. Yeah, use goddamn protection. <laughs> and and of course, if you've got teenagers who like to watch it or whatever, and then they don't know any better, that's a good message to send them. I'm surprised the entire South has not risen up against that. <laughs> oh wait, it's not gay people kissing. Oh yeah, because because that's where the real real scandal is. Yes. Ah, oh, wow. People are stupid, Gomer. Yes, they are. But you know what else? Speaking of gay people kissing, we had uh, we had a few confrontations this week. A little rev- few little revelations about Ben, and all around them. And what I find interesting is the, the what ended up happening was Brad and Felix ended up kind of just calling things off. You know, I'm sorry. Things off. But now, really... but now here's the thing. Okay. Here's what here's what really gets me though is Felix knows that Brad is pretty much balls deep in this whole situation with Ben. He yeah. he he realizes this. He doesn't know, you know, if it's further than balls deep at this point, but he knows Brad is in there pretty pretty deep. And what makes him throw him, you know, pretty much cut him loose was a selfie from Lucas from a time when the two of them had, you know, you were, were not exactly an item. Well, no, wait. The they they was, weren't together. Uh, yeah. They weren't together, at least not the first time. Then that time, I think that time they were trying to work... No, wait. I think that second yeah, time, yes, was, they were trying to work things out. Yes. And that's where but the selfie they, was from. But, and I, I really... I really wanted to kick Felix this week. Mm-hmm. Because I really thought that he was being completely unfair to Brad. Because he even stood there and said, you know, we didn't talk about exclusivity, we didn't really talk about anything. Uh, Brad made it very clear that he and Lucas were not seeing each other anymore, and that he wanted to, you know, focus on Felix. Mm -hmm. And Felix was a little bitch about it! (laughs) And I'm like, fuck you! You basically just stood there... And admitted that you have no reason to be upset, that you, you, you are not in a position to make demands, that you never did make demands, mm-hmm. but you're going to kick him out of your apartment anyway, yeah. because you feel slighted for no fucking reason. Fuck you! At that point, I'm like, you know what? I, I had kind of been inwardly cheering for Lucas and Brad anyway, because I think they have more in common. I think they're a better fit. Yeah. But... Well, they're mobsters kids, so, you know. You know, and after that, I'm like, you know what? I don't think Felix deserves, you know, another chance after that. He was, like, he was so unfair. Mm -hmm. And just, ugh, such an asshat. I just, he... And you would think, you would think, I'm I'm surprised that one was the one that 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 that, that broke it, not the fact that that Brad was balls deep with Brit in terms of yeah. Dante and, and all of them, that he didn't get a chance to finish finding out about. By the way, yes, because of course he didn't. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> oh my God, you're in bed with another guy. Like, OMG. yeah, we were OMG. exclusive. It's like, yeah, yeah we're, we weren't exclusive. Or at exactly. least I don't think we were. Oh. <sighs> But that does lead to the other end, because Elizabeth and Felix both know Elizabeth's got the test results. You know, I got the results of the test back. Dante Falconeri is your baby's father. Yep. Mm -hmm. And of course we know the fallout from that, and it's like Elizabeth and Nicholas and Britt all ended up at Dante and Lulu's place just to deliver the news. Yeah, it it, it was kind of funny because, uh, you know, Britt... Brit is amazing. Uh, she she is an absolutely phenomenal liar. I mean, like hardcore, world class, Olympic quality liar. I am genuinely impressed by her <laughs> uh, because you know she figured out that Elizabeth doesn't know that Lulu is Ben's mother. Right. And so what she did was, you know, it, you know, it, it, at first she, uh, oh, sorry, backing up. So Nicholas did, uh, 
ask her to marry him. Yes. And, uh, you know, she had started to tell Nicholas about Elizabeth, but then just uh, backtracked and just told him that Elizabeth, you know, had w- was the one that had taken Ben's hairbrush. And, you know, after she said no to his proposal, she explained that, uh, you know, Elizabeth had run the DNA test behind her back and figured out that Dante was Ben's father. And this is where she got really smart because she claimed that she didn't know. Mm-hmm. And that she was just as surprised as anyone else. Yeah, which, you know, if you, if you hadn't been following, you could believe that. Sure. But those of us who have been following for a while, we know that the entire embryo was Dante and Lulu's. Yes. And oh. so, yeah. Yeah. So, so of course, they all get over there. And Elizabeth bit, beat around the bush so much. Well, she you could tell Elizabeth had actually decided at that. Because she and Lulu sat down and started talking. Because uh, when she came in, Lulu assumed that Elizabeth was there. Because she found out that Nicholas was going to propose to Brit. Mm-hmm. And Elizabeth was like, wow, I actually didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> and so, you know, she and Lulu sat down and Lulu was kind of like, yo, are, you know, I, I can see what this is about. You're clearly still in love with Nicholas. Um, and... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Which, uh, which everybody and their grandmother has been saying, no fucking shit. Yes. And uh, that led into a discussion where um, they, because, you know, and, and Lulu was like, you know, I know you don't like Brit, but he makes Nicholas happy. And then she, you know, that led into them talking about Lulu and Dante deciding not to go with an egg donor. And Lulu was saying, you know, she would always feel like it wasn't her child, it was Dante's child with another woman. Mm-hmm. And that's when Elizabeth out. and that that's when Elizabeth kind of clammed up and you could tell she had kind of decided not to tell Lulu anything at that point because she was starting to feel bad. And then yep. Britt and Nicholas walk in and, you know, Nicholas just kind of blurts out, he's like, before, you know, you know, I don't know how much Elizabeth has told you, but, you know, you need to hear Britt out. Uh, uh, she, she only also, she also only just found out that Dante is Ben's father. And they are both like, what the shit? <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think, I think that would generally be my reaction. Although I would be more like, what in the motherfuck are you talking about, Cassidine boy? So Britt, you know, goes up to them and she says, okay, you know, last year I was in a really bad place and my mother convinced me to go along with this crazy idea of getting pregnant to try and keep Patrick. And as far as I knew, she just grabbed a random anonymous sample from the donor bank. I had no idea it was Dante's. Uh, I don't know if my mother knew or not, but I, I promise you, I didn't know that Dante was Ben's father until Elizabeth brought it to my attention. And she, I mean, she plays innocent in a way that is just absolutely brilliant. And, you know, this is this is not like it was last year where Britt was lying her ass off just to wrap her legs around Patrick Drake, but this time <laughs> she's lying her ass off basically to save it. So she can well, save what she has gotten out you know, thus far with Nicholas. And and it's not like she's trying to manipulate him or anything. She's been mostly up front. She hasn't told him everything because she's got that fear that she's going to lose him. Which Well, it's, I, I think this is less about trying to uh, keep Nicholas than it is about uh, trying to keep Ben. Because she is uh, legitimately head over heels for her baby now. Yeah. But there is also that, too. It's like uh, it's like she doesn't want to lose everything. And so I you know, I think I think not losing Ben is more important to her than than not losing Nicholas. Yeah. And and I hope that when everything does come out in the open, because you know it eventually will. 
but uh, when it all comes out in the open that maybe Dante and Lulu can work out something with Brit in the end, because it's obvious all three of them are, are crazy about that kid. <coughs> it's obvious. Yeah, that's it's, obvious. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens, because, you know, you know it's, it's, it's really adorable. You know, after everything... Uh, you know, they're out in the alley or, or wherever they were and uh, Britt's like Britt turns to Nicholas and she's like, well, I bet you're really glad we didn't get engaged now and he's like, what do you mean? and he's like, I still want to marry you and she says yes <laughs> and, and, you know Smith is right, the, right there in the hall right there, because of course she is uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, the next day they they talk and, uh, you know, Britt's still saying, you know, worried about Dante and Lulu trying to take Ben away. And Nicholas comes up with an actually really good plan. He's like, you know what? Why don't you take Ben over there, mm -hmm. you know, as a show of good faith? And, you know what? Let's all just talk. And, you know, maybe you can work out a joint custody agreement. Yeah, which is a very good idea. By the way, Spencer came running into the bedroom. <laughs> and, and he once Nicholas told him that they were engaged, did this little dance, and it was, oh, holy hell, that was great. That was so <laughs> fucking adorable. Yes. I, I, I get such a kick out of Spencer. I mean, you know... He's he's just so superior, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he just you know lords himself over everyone else, and it's it's just it's so damn cute. Yes, it is so damn cute. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, when he gets older, he'll learn a little bit of humility. But for right now, it's cute. yeah, yes, mm. but yeah. And he, he, he's like, I call best man. And I'm like, uh, sure you do, kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he probably could. I mean, he is Nicholas's son, after all. Yes. Uh, hmm. But yeah, and then of course, Britt goes off to work. Well, goes off to let Ben visit with Dante. And then Britt yes. gets called in because she's having to cover for another doctor. And yes. lo and behold, it's Sabrina. Yes. And the two of them actually, you know, they have a decent conversation, and they start patching things up. Yeah, and you know, Brit, Brit apologizes, and Sabrina accepts her apology, and you know, it seems very genuine all around. And yes. uh, you know, the baby is uh, big enough that they can tell the sex, but you know, Sabrina doesn't want to know about it uh, without Patrick there. Right. Uh, and the reason that Patrick is not there. Is because drama, 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 drama. Yes, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, okay. In the meantime, uh, you know, while Britt's at work and, and Ben is out, Elizabeth goes over to Windermere at, with, you know, following Robin's advice to just go and tell him exactly how she feels. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth just puts it all out there. I'm still in love with you. I, I, I didn't want us to ruin any things again, and I tried to get over you by dating AJ, at which point I said, oh, you, you poor bastard, AJ. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when he finds out, goddamn. You know, leave AJ alone! <laughs> but, <sighs> oh, but, but yeah, and then Nicholas is like, yeah, I'm, you, you told me to move on, so I did it. I'm in love with Brit, and I'm getting married to her. Yeah. So, it's like, yeah, that that that's a case of it's extremely bad timing, Liz. Very bad timing on your part. Hmm. Ah, <sighs> but I I don't I don't I I hope that it doesn't lead anywhere where it's gonna be like really bad for Brit or anything. It's just uh But knowing knowing how these kind of thing goes, just watch by the end of the year, everything will come out about Brit. Nicholas will get pissed, and he'll end up sleeping with Liz. Watch. Yeah, you're probably right, and it'll be, it'll just be a question of well, whether he ultimately winds up with Brit or Elizabeth. Yeah, I hope he winds up with Brit. I like those Me two. Me too. I like them. And you know what? Despite everything that she's pulled, I'm sorry, Brit is a better person than Elizabeth. Yeah. You know, Brit has done some pretty unconscionable things, but she has changed. And, you know, Elizabeth, she's just... She's mean. And she's selfish. And I, I don't like her. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. I remember watching Liz when she was pretty much first introduced to the show back in the 90s. She had this, like, little hellion thing going on, and then she was raped, and that softened up her character for a, li for a little bit. She fell in love with Lucky, um, Nicholas's brother, and in fact, she and Lucky, along with Nicholas and Emily Quartermain, they, all, they were all like a, a little foursome group after a while. Even mm. though, you know, at the time, the whole blood between the Spencers and the Cassidines were still kind of shaky ground a little bit there, but, you know, Nicholas and Lucky were getting along. They were, you know, they're half-brothers, so... Mm -hmm. So and it was it was um, along that time it was like yeah everybody was shipping Liz and Liz and Lucky, and of course Nicholas with Emily which those two have played out over the years Nicholas and and Lucky eventually married Liz and Emily respectively, you know mm -hmm. uh, well you, well Liz Lucky Nicholas Emily they all got married yeah. eventually, and yeah. unfortunately Emily had had been I think she was killed by a serial killer at some point. So Emily's out of the picture, and then after that, Nicholas and Liz got together, and, and, and they basically, uh, well, Liz cheated on Lucky with Nicholas, which earned her a big, big what the hell from Lulu in front of everybody in the goddamn hospital. <laughs> there's, there's, I, I saw the clip of it the other day, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like, and there's nothing anybody else could do. It's like, everybody's there. For some reason, Sonny was randomly there. And he's like, that's happening. Okay. <laughs> that's just looking at on his face. Okay, that happened. Um, okay. Oh, and, and I have a feeling if history repeats itself, that I, I would not be surprised if Liz got another one. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, studying studying her a little bit here and there, she... She could come off as a little hypocritical, and I could definitely see that. Because it's like, you know, yeah, you shouldn't have done this, 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 but you know what, I'll go do it anyway. Where is where is Lucky these days? Lucky, I want to say he's over in Europe. Okay. You know, doing some kind of stuff or whatever. I'm not really, really sure. Okay. Um, they may have mentioned it in the show recently, but I, it, it just kind of slipped my mind. Oh, but, um, but, yeah. Oh, so there, there's all of that drama there. <laughs> uh, speaking of more drama, Robin and Patrick. Do, do you want to talk about that first, or do you want to talk about uh, Obrecht and Cass Victor Cassidyne first? Well, we can use that as a lead-in, because those two are hilarious. Yes. I am loving the hell out of Victor. You know, mm -hmm. e even, even with his character being a little bit more, you know, being all the intimidating and everything, which you gotta admit, that's pretty awesome. Yes. But the way he, he just handles Obrecht and, and the way that he's trying to convince her, yeah, you don't really need Faison. He won't worship you like I will. Yes. <laughs> and Obrecht is like, I am not interested. Is there any way I could say this even more clearly? And yeah, like, Victor Cassidy, he does not care. It's, it's so funny because she... She really is. She really is getting a taste of her own medicine because you know what? This is exactly how she is with Faison. Yeah, who, as she is finding out, is not in Steinmauer. Or at least well, is not able to accept calls. Yeah, why no, one's, can't no they... one's letting her speak to him. Yeah, well, and I wonder why. Is it because he's not there? Is it because mm -hmm. that Robert and Anna actually killed his ass? That could be it. That, it probably hasn't been written yet. Um, yeah, but what has been written <laughs> is that Victor revealed a little bit of his plan to Obrecht, you know, concerning <laughs> Robin, and he's all, and she's also talked him into, I believe she talked him into um, finding out what happened to Faison. Yeah, it's kind of funny because basically she uh, trades a tiny bit of uh, affection his way for, you know, to, to, to manipulate him into saying he'll look into what's going on with Faison. Yeah. I, is that very skillful, actually? Very much so. She could even manipulate Victor. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which, you know, although I love her excuse when he first gave her the chocolate. I'm watching my weight. Yes. <laughs> like bullshit. <laughs> and then, she, you know, her stomach is upset because of Faison, which she is genuinely worried about him. Like, yes. I, okay, you know, I, I can buy that. 
you know, and, and, and I'm sure she very much is, but, you know, hey, we'll find out eventually. But then we find out that Robin has told Patrick pretty much everything. Yeah, well, and you know what? She kind of had to, and I was glad she finally fessed up to him because the excuses that she was kind of trying to come up with were complete horse shit, and yeah, they were not even good excuses. Which, I, I mentioned it last week, I'm, I'm gonna go off on it here, even though I know it turned out the way it did, you know, so Robin can keep her integrity intact, you know, fully intact, uh, uh, you know, and all of that. It, it's basically, the way it was looking at that point was like, really? You're going to make Robin look like this really horrible person, saying things like, I don't want us to be a family anymore, that sort of thing? It's like, no, 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 no. That is extremely out of character for Robin. Yeah. Extremely. I mean, keep in mind, I've been watching her since, you know, the late 90s, you know, when she's been on again, off again on the show. Robin's not like that. She she doesn't just leave just because of butthurt or anything. She she has, she, she, she comes up with very good reasons. She, she's, you know, more honest. I mean, she's not completely honest, you know. I mean, she tells lies every now and then. I think everybody mm-hmm. does. But at the same time, you know, she's not this bitch who's like, oh, I just don't want to be a family anymore, so I have to go. And, and, and just drop it at that. And thankfully, Patrick saw through that. It's like, no, 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 no. Yes. What the fuck is really going on? <laughs> so, yeah. And Patrick is understandably protective. I don't blame him. You know, and, and he wants to, and, and he's a little bit selfish. Again, kind of don't blame him because they, you know, she's been gone yeah. for two years. And everybody thought she was dead, so, you know, hey. But Mac, I I think it was Mac who had the most level head about it. He's like, you know what? At least I know you're out there, you're alive, and you're helping people. You know, because while Mac knows she's going away, he doesn't know what, who she's going to help. The point is, she's going to help people. He doesn't know that two of those people are the Cassidines. Or at least two of them are the Cassidines. There's also Jason, and we don't know how many other Cassidines Victor has on ice. And, of course, Victor finds out and he knows and does his threats and and all of that and blah, 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 blah. Says, my plane leaves tomorrow and you better be on it if you want to save Jason, blah, 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 blah. blah. And Robin's like, yeah, I'm going to be there. And poor Emma. And so, I, you know, oh. and she and Patrick, you know, Robin and Patrick have this fight. And, like, I know that Kimberly McCullough has to leave the show. I mean, I un- like, I understand that they have to find a way to, you know, get her out. But I'm sorry, in this continuity, Patrick is right. Patrick is motherfucking Mm -hmm. right. And I just, like, ugh. (laughs) I, I, you know, I, and, and, you know, as that scene went on, and they kept going back and forth and back and forth, and he's like, you can't do this, you know, you know, it, it's this, you know, you can't leave your family because of Jason again, you know, and uh, on and on and on. And she basically says, you know, Jason is more important. And. Uh, yeah, which I didn't quite read it that way, but I can and, see And, you know, I, I, I just, as it kept going on, I found it harder and harder to empathize with Robin and I found myself liking her less and less and less and it's kind of funny um, you know I told you uh, my dad has you know gotten completely sucked into this show now uh, and so he, he, he watches it with me and he cannot stand Robin uh, he he hates her with the fire of a thousand suns I mean he, he, you know, and, and back even, you know, after she came back and, you know, Patrick was trying to choose between Robin and Sabrina, he kept saying, Patrick's a moron! Robin is such a bitch! He totally chose wrong! He t- should have chosen Sabrina! God, Robin sucks! And I was right! <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I think I, I think this is where we can get our two different perspectives on because as I've mentioned, you know, I've 
had more exposure to Robin as a character. I've seen her grow and, and change over time as a character. And I've seen a good, a, at least a good part of that history she has mm-hmm. with Jason. You know, they were very close. And yeah, if she hadn't been there for her, she may not have been alive to meet Patrick and get married to him and fall in love with him and have Emma. So Jason is, for better or for worse, is a big part of her life. And she helped him, well, he helped her rather immensely. And the way I'm seeing this is, this is a chance for her to return that favor. You know, he saved her life so many times. Yeah, he was a hitman. Yeah, he got into dangerous situations every day. But when it came to Robin, you know, he would have taken all of the bullets in the world for her. He probably did at one <laughs> point, too. Uh, so it's like, for her, it's, it's not about whether or not she loves her family or who she loves better or who is more important. I see it as, for her... It, it's a chance to help somebody that has been there for her all of these years that has been a big help to her who has saved her life countless numbers of times and if it wasn't for him she would not have the family she has so now. here's here's my question so that that is that is where that is where um, I, see I I have not seen any scenes at all with Jason uh, he was gone before I started watching so here's my question would Jason? Mm-hmm. willingly give up his life to prevent Helena and Stavros from coming back. Uh, if it was willing, uh, I can see him probably. Because that's, probably because that's something so. that Robin doesn't seem to be taking into account. Yeah. But at the same time, Jason is also not willingly in this position either. And he does need help. No. So it's like, you know, I mean, I get that, and, and I can see him wanting to do the sacrifice just to take those two out, especially knowing how bad news they are. Because I seem to remember he was, I th- I want to say he was a little bit involved when Stavros originally came back, back in the late 90s. I don't remember too well, but I want to say he was. He was definitely around at that point. Uh, whether he was directly involved or not is a whole different story. But, um... But yeah, so he's you know I, I I like to think that he would sacrifice himself if need be, if if he felt it. Would yeah, be so you know that's you know, that that's kind of been my question through this whole thing is you know would Jason see it as a fair trade off to bring him back if it also meant bringing back Helena and Stavros like. And no one seems to have thought of that. And granted, they probably shouldn't because that would make her exit a little more complicated. But, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, that's what I want to know. I could see if, if if we get to that point and she does get him back, you know, she revives him and everything, then I could see him learning about it and understanding and, and not liking it. But, you know, you know, trying to talk Robin out of those two, but eh, it, it, it's, it would get mucky. That's I know. That much I At this know. point, though, you know, part of me, actually most of me, really wants Patrick to say, you know what, you leave, we're done. I really, like, yeah. I kind of want, I not kind of, I want to see him make that ultimatum. I want to see him say, if you leave us again, I'm going back to Sabrina. Yeah, which I would hate for him to see that. I even though you know it would be justified, I think, because again, yeah, I, I see Robin and, and all of that I explained earlier. Yes, but I can see from Patrick's side too, and, and that kind of an ultimatum I think might be a little justified. I think it would be more than a little justified, especially after, uh, like you're saying, poor Emma. (sighs) Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, So, it's just, oof. Although, speaking of which, this a little, not really off topic, because it's still about the show, but uh, this coming Monday, which should be the day that this goes up and goes live, is the 13,000th episode of General Hospital. That's just crazy to me. Like, 13... Thousand episodes. Can you like mm-hmm. just just? I can't even fit that into my head. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> <sighs> uh, 
Oh uh, yes, so thirteen thousand. And among the things they they do have, they did have a little preview of uh, Monday's episode. And Patrick and Sabrina, they they seem to have calmed down, and they they were just. It, it, it had the thing of like a last night together, so, so that 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 is something to look forward to, I guess. So, uh, so who knows? Maybe maybe after that he gives her the ultimatum. Maybe he did and reneged on it. I don't know. Maybe Patrick and Robin. But, but um. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I think that, you, I think you that's said what Patrick I said. and Sabrina, and I was like, wait. <laughs> uh. I was like, okay. oh shit. Yeah. So yeah. So Patrick and Robin. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, it, it, and I guess, like, at least according to what Robin was telling Emma, like, she can at least still be in contact with them this time, but yeah, still, it, but, you know, and even the, but even Emma's like, I don't want that, I want you to be here, and, you know, Emma gets upset enough that she actually runs out of the room. Yeah, it's like, oh. Oh, so, mm, which, which, you know what, I don't know why he would need to take her out of the country. He could very easily bring them there, because, guess what, they could have the facilities built right under goddamn That's General true. Hospital. That's They've true. done it before. But that, that wouldn't be as convenient. And, you know, just to say, there's, there's no logical reason why Patrick and Emma can't come with her, except that, you know... Mm -hmm. The actors playing Patrick and Emma aren't leaving the show, uh, and, so, and so they're like, yeah. uh, "Reasons, reasons, uh, reasons, yes, reasons." Yeah. Oh, hey, we have a Cassidy that's not really. Look dead, at the shiny thing. That's the, the reason. Okay. That's the reason. Um. Yes. Which we spent so much time talking about about this one that 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 we we haven't really touched on um, Heather and, oh. and Franco. Oh my and god! And so yeah. Finally, people remembered, oh, wait, there are two men missing. Because uh, first what happened was, you know, Franco finally woke up, and he is uh, recovering slowly. And, uh, you know, he and Carly are talking, and, you know, she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> what happened to Luke? <laughs> and she feels so bad that she, mm -hmm. you know, forgot, and, you know, in the, middle, in, in the midst of everything. And she, you know, finally gets uh, Dante on the phone and gets the police looking for Luke, which Tracy, thank you. She's like, God damn it, I knew it. <laughs> and she gets yes, she gets Vindication. a couple of really good rants in, and then, um, and then uh, Franco is talking to Kevin, and suddenly realizes, oh shit. Scott Baldwin is also missing. He went to Miss Cabbage. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, yep. uh, so. Lucy and Tracy are, are in the, in the police station kind of pacing and talking to themselves, which I thought was hilarious. And, you know, Oh, those two. <laughs> and just, like, just absolutely hilarious. Cause you know, they're, you know, they're talking to each other, but mostly they're talking to themselves. And Tracy just looks over. She's like, why do you care about Scott Baldwin? And Lucy's like, the uh, uh, shiny thing, look over there. Um, <laughs> pretty much, because it's like, yeah, it, it's pretty obvious that she still wants the Baldwin, yes. the Baldwin Baldwin. Um, but then Anna uh, does, like, this is the single smartest thing I have seen her do in the entire time I have been watching. Because usually, Anna is an incompetent twit. I'm sorry. It's just the truth. And, but, yeah. you know, she gets Heather Weber into the interrogation room and, uh, you know, starts, uh, um, and, and, you know, starts, you know, kind of talking to her and, uh, you know, Heather's like, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything, and, you know, and, and, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, Anna and then Anna's breakfast. like, well, okay, you know, let's make a deal, let's talk about that, and while we talk about that, I'm just, I'm going to have some lunch, and, uh, you know, she pulls out this thing, and as soon as she did that, I knew exactly where it was going, uh, and, uh, Heather's like, well, fine, <laughs> and, uh, 
you know, Anna sits there and starts eating a BLT from Kelly's and starts talking about how delicious it is and how every component is so <coughs> fantastic. And, and Heather's finally just is like, I'll tell you whatever you ought to know. Just let me have the sandwich. <laughs> and I was like, that is, yes. that is just uh, hands down. It is the smartest thing that Anna has has done in in the time I've been watching this show. I mean, it's just a stroke of absolute genius. And so, you know... Yes. You know, they... <laughs> finally, someone goes down there with more than one person to Miss Cabbage, uh, and Anna takes a couple officers down there, uh, corners, you know, one of the... one of the orderlies, and she's like, okay, you know what? I know you're working with Heather... If you want to avoid even worse charges, you're going to take me to where Luke and, and Scott Baldwin are right now uh, and so that we don't have to search for them. And so he does. And it's so funny because they're like, they're both in there in, you know, jumpsuits and straight jackets, just like sleeping on each other. And it's so goddamn cute. <laughs> 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 Two old men know, sleeping it's, in it's, jackets they just, together. <laughs> they're just sleeping so peacefully. It's... Yes. And then we find out that, you know, once they get to the hospital, they get checked out. Scott's, well, yeah. he's Scott. And Luke is, well, not Luke. He's just and that, really oh God, out of it. That scene was so funny because Tracy comes up and she starts ripping him to shreds. Just talk, and and I absolutely loved her rant there because she's like, you know, Bo, I knew that you hadn't just wandered off. That something was actually wrong. It was because my bank account was still intact. That was <laughs> you hadn't embezzled anything <laughs> from me. That's how I knew that something was really wrong. And she just keeps going and going and going and she's like is that all you you know do you have anything to say for yourself and he's and he just looks at her and goes hello tracy <laughs> and she's like what the hell and, yes. they're, and they're like oh by the way he was drunk and then she's like oh god luke are you okay and then she starts like stroking his head and like, like a complete 180 and like all of this concern uh, and yes. it was just it was oh my god like i just laughed so hard at that scene oh she, she really she does, does love him they are they are really cute they really are yes and i do want to make one other note um uh, when uh when uh, kevin and and uh franco were, were passing each other franco was in the wheelchair and kevin you know, needing to apologize and talk to him about the whole situation, he grabbed Franco's wheelchair and started wheeling him along to a room. And Franco just screams out, "I'm being kidnapped by my yes, former was... analyst!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> so of course they have the talk, and, and then and then we know that led into Scott. And oh dear. Mm. <laughs> and mm. yeah, and uh, you know, it's kind of funny because you know. Lucy comes in and she's kind of fawning over Scott and uh, Tracy just kind of sees the two of them and like smirks to herself and uh, it's like yeah and uh, even Franco after seeing Lucy freak out about Scott turned to Kevin and was like uh you know something's going on there right you, you know that right yeah <laughs> Is like yeah. Again, Franco is insane, yeah. not well, stupid he even, anymore. He's not even really. Man, in, I haven't said he's that. He's not even before. really insane anymore, but he is still brilliant. Yes, he is not stupid. Oh, so let's see. Oh, dear. um, so oh. Michael and Kiki. Oh, yeah. They 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 have their fight. They're still on the outs and. And Michael is wondering whether or not he should forgive her. Goes to, they each go to yes, their fathers and... about about the whole situation. Which, yeah, you know, fathers. And I, I, oh god, I I got such a kick out of Kiki talking to Silas because Silas is just kind of standing there like a like a deer in the headlights, going no, uh, as she keeps talking and talking and talking. And he he actually asks her, he's like, do 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 you want me to say anything? And she says no. And he says okay. And he just. <laughs> He just lets their and I'm like you know what unload. that is communication <laughs> that is good communication 
being, you know, her being honest mm -hmm. enough to say, no, just listen to me, and then, you know, waits and, and then gives him permission when he can start talking again. That That is excellent communication skills there. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, but it's 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 really funny uh, because, you know, Michael is really hurt that Kiki lied to him and still upset that she trusted Franco even though, you know, everything, you know, it was her trusting Franco that made everything turn out okay for his mother. And Kiki, on the other hand, is mad at Michael for being mad. She thinks that her lying was completely justified and she doesn't think that she should have to apologize to him. And, you know, you know, the, you know, like you said, both of their fathers listen. And, you know, both of them kind of just look at their respective children and say, you know what, you need to decide whether this relationship is one that you want to save. You know, that's, that's what it comes down to, because if it's worth saving, then you work it out. And if it's not you walk away and it really is that simple and so you know in the end they they run into each other and that was kind of one of the cliffhangers was you know what's gonna what's gonna happen with them mm -hmm. uh, and another one is i know you know before um uh, silas and sam end up going off to manhattan to get more information about clearing silas's name and everything first of all julian turns up and he Turns out he made a donation to some place in, in uh, Danny's honor. Danny Sam's brother's honor, not Danny Sam's son. Mm -hmm. Right. And, of course, she's moved and touched. Like, holy shit. <laughs> you know? And and, he, and he's still struggling with, with Lucas and his sexuality. I mean, you know, you grew up, you grow up in that kind of a situation, you know. You know where your where the homophobia is basically drilled into your head. It, it's not going to yeah. go away immediately. Although Julian is showing he is willing yes. to take those steps. And so you know, it, it's kind of funny because he he looks at Sam and he says, you know, Lucas has agreed to give me a chance. I just hope that you'll do the same. And so, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. so, so Sam. Yeah, and of course Julian. So, and so, you know, Sam, oh, sorry. Sam was kind of <laughs> thinking about it at that point. You know, and Julian did already. You know is also starting to make inroads with uh, Alexis, just kind of, you know, mm -hmm. friend friending up to her, is that a word? I don't know. Um, and uh, had a chance to see, see Danny. And so, you know, he, he's, he's making an effort. So... Yeah. And so, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a few things going on there. Uh, you know, meanwhile... He and uh, Julian and um, Ava kind of have words because he knows that, uh, you know, because of what Alexis told him, he knows that um, Ava was messing with his computer, and of course she denies it. And they both be they basically threaten each other. They're like, "I I have oh, no yeah. problem killing you if it suits my my needs," and it's like. All right then. <laughs> yeah, the Jerome family, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, and uh, it's also going to be interesting to see what happens the next time Julian and Lucas cross paths, because Lucas was in the hospital, you know, visiting Carly, and uh, he and Morgan had a conversation, and Morgan yeah. totally, you know, laid out that you know. Julian uh, and Sonny are both mobsters, but Julian actually threatened Morgan's family. Yeah, and by extension, a yeah. Lucas's family, uh, too. It's like, yeah. And <laughs> so gonna it's, it's well going to be interesting to see what Lucas does with that information. Yeah, and another thing that's going to be interesting to see because since Ava came through and got the information and Sunny even verified that she didn't know what all the information was she just mm. copied it blindly and um, well Sunny found out exactly who was bankrolling the Jeromes or at least Julia well yeah and it's it maybe because they haven't they haven't done the reveal yet all they've really revealed is that uh, Julian has 
a backer that Ava does not know about. And... That's been back yes, him for years. And uh, she, she was very surprised when she found out. Mm-hmm. My money is either on A, The Return of Frank Smith, which, hey, you know what? Julian Jerome was dead for a while. Frank Smith has been too. It could be him. Or it could be one of the Cassidines. It'll, if they go the Cassidine route, they would probably end up going with Victor because the WSB was involved in saving That's Jerome's true. ass. So it, it might be Victor, but I would love to see it be Mikos just to show that, yeah, my, you know, he is not dead. He has been living you know, secretly for a while and not even telling Helena, which knowing Helena's history... It, it would be a case of even yeah. evil has standards. Yeah. In Mikos' case. Because, <laughs> I mean, okay, she killed his lover. After, you know, like, like slit the throat of his lover in front of the two children he had oh, wow. by that lover. Lover, One of which is oh, Alexis. that's nice. Yeah! So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Mikos, not, well, not, you know, if Mikos has really been alive all this time, or, or has just been recently revived or what have you and not wanting to tell anybody about it, I, 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 I could understand that. Just slightly. A little bit. Oh, or it could, or they could just throw us out of left field. Maybe it's Faison who really wasn't dead. You know, even though, you know, Robert and Anna, you know, presumably killed him. He could have came back and, and like, you know, oh, was that it? You'll just shut me and you just left me. <laughs> And is still getting in touch with the Jeromes. Or it could be Jerry Jax. Or it could be Jerry's brother, Jasper Jax. Which, which everybody calls Jax. Isn't... Which, yeah, it's Jas Jackson Jax. And Jerry <laughs> Jackson did... They call him Jax. J-A-X. And that's how he's been known all this time. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Because I, when I first started watching the show, I was also playing a lot of Mortal Kombat. <clears throat> so, yeah. But it, it would be, or, oh, no, no, it can't be, it can't be Helena or Stavros, not yet. Not yet. So, there's, there's still an ice. So, it, it, it would be fun to find out yes. who was really bankrolling him. <laughs> that's our, that's our guesses. And, and, and feel free, if, if you hear this before any reveals, you know, feel free to send in your own. Or, if you've seen the reveal and you've had different guesses, send them in. I would love to know what you guys were guessing. <laughs> oh lordy! <laughs> oh, so okay. So, um, is there anything else we've missed? Because we spent a lot of time on one of them. That's for sure. Um, let's see. Dum 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 dum. I'm trying to think. Is there any any anything else? Um. Oh yeah, Rafe. Oh. Because yeah, Rafe he, made he a little bit of an there, appearance. Yeah, because uh, he and uh, Kiki are going to dinner on Silas's dime. Because Kiki's just kind of going to keep an eye on Rafe while Silas is in New York. And uh, as they're as they're going into to the Metro Court, uh, Rafe sees Molly and TJ about to go up to their room. Yep, and it's like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Poor, poor Rafe. I mean, I mean, yeah, what he ended up doing, you know, ratting out TJ like he did. It, it, it legally, I can understand it being a good thing, but on a personal level, it's a betrayal, and betrayal's not cool. So it's like, it, it you know, it's one of those kind of gray areas. Whereas, like, legally, you, you might have done good, but morally, yeah. it's a whole different story. But, uh, it, you know, and yeah, of course, he lost out on Molly after that, and, that, and that's his own damn fault. But it still got a yeah. hurt like a punch to the gut. So. So yeah, I, I wonder how that's gonna turn out if it turns out much at all. Oh. So anyway, that is gonna be it for this week. Uh, we've got about five minutes left on the timer, but with the way I ramble about my stuff, <laughs> it could take about five minutes for us to finish up. <laughs> So, uh, if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Twitter at Gomer21XX. And I finally gave in. I got a Tumblr. Squee, Everybody squee now. Squee, Go ahead. Squee, squee. Tumblr. There you go. 
There you go. Yes, I got a Tumblr, and I've quickly set up one for all of my podcasts as well as the main site. Um, and you can find me personally on Tumblr at, uh, well, same place you can find me on Twitter, gomer one double x And it's mostly reblogging different things. Sometimes I'll throw things out there and reblog some stuff from the uh, site stuffs or whatever. Um, so, yeah, and, and speaking of my site, my site is rtgomer.com, where you can find my stuff as, lo- as well as stuff by lots of different other people, such as FastFox, who's mm. recently started a run of Portal 2. Keep in mind his his uh, Let's Play series is <laughs> Let's Get Pissed and Play, so he's getting <laughs> drunk while playing Portal Two. <laughs> so uh, so we have that, and uh, and of course we all we still have you know Diamanda Hagen and and Writer's Block and, and other shows and other really great producers. <laughs> it would take me way too long to list everybody unless I went into turbo mode, so I'm not going to do that. But you can also find my stuff over on Nerdvice. Dot com, which you can also find. Yeah, there's actually a crossover between my site and Nerdvice a little bit, because Omega is writing articles over there, and of course, Lesbian Talk can go up there as well. And of course, there's me, and I think Rosenhacker, he, he's on both of our sites as well, uh, you know, among others. So it's 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 really really fun to, to see the crossover and stuff. Oh. Uh, so there's all that. And if you want to write into the show, you want to write in comments or whatever, uh, you can always just leave a comment on wherever this is posted. Or you can write into the show directly at rtgomerprod at gmail.com. I know I don't put it in every week. I need to remember to do so. Yes. <laughs> and hello, doggy. So uh, speaking of dog, speaking of uh, hello, uh, you can um, find where can me, we find you? Uh, I also yeah, right. have a Tumblr where I mostly reblog stuff. It's uh, Namio's Corner. I finally, I finally uh, found my password and started doing a lot of stuff on Tumblr. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at, uh, at Naomi Washburn. Uh, you can find me on the fabulous rtgomer.com. Fabulous. It's and fabulous. And you can find me on Etsy at Namio Stained Glass. Yay. Hooray. So, uh. So with that, I actually didn't ramble on as much as I thought I would. Wow. (laughs) I know, right? So uh, we're going to get out of here. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Namio signing off. And thank you for listening. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.